Hi, my name is Dr. Sudeep Singh Sachdev and I am a senior consultant and clinical lead of nephrology and renal transplantation Narayana Super Speciality Hospital Gurugram. Now, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease can present with various complications, the most common of which is kidney failure. And this has only two options for any patient forthcoming, which is either to be on dialysis, hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis lifelong or to go ahead with a kidney transplant, which is a more safe and a more effective option for renal replacement. Apart from this, Polycystic kidney disease can also affect the liver and lead to polycystic liver disease where there is formation of multiple cysts in the liver. This can lead to not only pain in the right upper abdomen but along with that infection and this in turn in rare cases can also lead to liver failure which might present with portal hypertension and even an upper uh, GI bleed. But however, this is a rare complication. The most serious complication of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease would be the presence of intracranial hemorrhage secondary to a cerebral aneurysm. It is often associated with an abnormal dilatation of the arteries of the brain which in the presence of accelerated hypertension can lead to intracranial hemorrhage and can even lead to death. So one has to be careful in evaluating polycystic kidney disease for such complications. Another common complication which happens in 20 to 30 percent of ADPKD patients is presence of kidney stones. This in turn can lead to pain in the flanks or can lead to even bleeding in the urine. Another complication in the heart would be the presence of valvular disorders like mitral valve prolapse which may in turn lead to fluid or volume overload and other abnormalities in the heart chambers. A detailed workup is required to make a diagnosis of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. The first and foremost investigation of choice is the ultrasound of the kidney ureter bladder or the ultrasound KUB. Presence of more than two cysts in each kidney between the age group of 30 to 60 or more than four cysts in each kidney above the age of 60 is the hallmark for the diagnosis of this disease. For further evaluation of these cysts, one can also get a CT scan to differentiate between infection, hemorrhage or an MRI or MR angiography if required for further evaluation. Apart from this, one has to get the urine analysis in the form of urine routine microscopy and urine culture sensitivity to rule out the presence of urinary tract infection. Since this disease eats up the kidney and leads to chronic kidney disease, it is essential to get the kidney function tests and the complete blood count done to know at what stage of chronic kidney disease the disease has progressed to. Apart from this, a routine 2D echocardiogram to rule out the presence of valvular disorders like mitral valve prolapse needs to be done. If the person has any central nervous system symptoms like headache or any problems in cognition or speech, with a family history of the disease, it is also essential to get an MRI or MR angio of the brain done to evaluate the presence of aneurysms which are abnormal dilatation of the vessels and if they burst can lead to serious adverse consequences like stroke and even death. Furthermore, genetic testing and DNA linkage analysis can also help in potentially clinching the diagnosis of this disease.